Well, hello, everybody. This is a rage coming at you. <laughs> it's like 10 p.m. And right about now feels like the exact perfect time to be <laughs> recording the first episode of, I guess, a new season. I don't know. It's really just like I don't have any set structures. If you've been following me for a while and if you've been someone who regularly keeps up with what I post, you will have noticed by now that I often have an urge to announce schedules and plans because I just feel like that's what needs to happen. Like I, if I do something that I have to have it all planned out from the beginning, um, like my intentions with it and how it's going to look. And that's what I did with the this podcast um, a few months ago when I rebranded it and I started it again and I was like this is what it's gonna be Uh, I'm gonna be talking about these things and then I did that for a little bit it got really boring I realized over the past few months that I actually hate doing that and I feel like I do that because there is has been parts of me that have just felt like doing this podcast the way that I actually want to be doing it won't be good enough and therefore I try to fit myself into a mold which is a mold based on basically what I've seen other quote-unquote successful podcasters do or, or shows successful shows and I map out a little mold in my mind and I'm like okay as long as I do it like this then it should be good that should be safe But in reality, all I really want to do and what I've always just wanted to do with the podcast is literally just turn on a mic and start talking and feel surprised at what comes out. So here I am doing just that. And honestly, it's kind of a cause for celebration because I honestly didn't realize how often I try to fit my creations into a mold like I was just saying like I honestly didn't realize how much that kind of energy seeps into my work and has seeped into my work in the past and again it's literally just from like me not having the ability to see my own gifts or my brilliance or like be able it's like my inability to recognize myself and see my work and uniqueness as something good and as something worth other people's time and other people's presence and because of that I'm like okay well all I know so I know two things number one I really want to make a podcast because It just feels like something that I really want to do. (laughs) And this desire to have a podcast doesn't go away. And it hasn't gone away for like three to four years. So anyway, maybe I should do a podcast. So that's the number one thing that I know. Second thing used to be, okay, I want to make a podcast, but I don't think I'm good enough to make a podcast. I don't think I have enough things to say to make a podcast I don't think I am interesting enough to hold people's attention and those two things like number one and number two that I just said like those two things really conflict with one another and so in the past in order to resolve this conflict I was like okay here's what I'll do I will make a podcast but since I don't think that me just doing how I want and me just being my complete 100% self and allowing myself to express in exactly the ways that I want to express and the organic ways that I want to express, since I believe that that's not going to be good enough and people won't want to listen and there'll be no point to having a podcast because nobody's listening and nobody's being able to receive the words that I'm sharing, then what I'll do is I will go look at all these other podcasts and I'll go research all their formats and I'll try to figure out a combination of a format from all these different podcasts I like and I'll try to make a mold 
out of all the formats because I don't trust the molds that I've made innately by myself. I feel like my mold or my format has to be something that's in like an amalgamation of other people's stuff. Like it, it can't be something that just comes from within me. And that's what I've been doing, honestly, with all my creative work over for as long as I can remember, even starting with a YouTube channel, which which I which is basically like my first ever adventure into personal creative expression my youtube channel which i created in 2017 and even that i did a lot of research beforehand um deliberately and passively to kind of figure out how i should create a youtube channel and how i should make videos and there's just been a lot of should energy present in the work that i do and the work that i put out there and this year this month i it just clicked for me how much that takes away from what i really really want to share and how i really want to share it and how draining that has made it my creative life feel because my creative life what i've always wanted for it to feel like is oh my god, I have this like inspirations app and it feels so alive and it feels so good and I just want to like bring it out into the world and express myself into the world and here you go world and move on to the next thing. What my creative life has felt like up until now has been like, oh, I really want to express this thing, but oh my god, what are people going to think about that? Oh, are people going to like that? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if people are going to like that. Okay, um, 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 let's just try to do this okay that that looks like something people really like okay okay because i know people like that because i have seen other people recognize it in someone else and validate it for someone else and so if they validate it for someone else it's like a proven method and i should just do that and then i put it out there you know in that whole process all that anxious energy just drains that pure innocent joy of creation that i in here like I started with and yeah just made it had just made my whole process of creation so draining so draining because there's just so many shoulds like I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this if I want to make a podcast I have to do it like this and if I have to do it like this that means I need to spend this much time on editing and I need to use this specific mic and I need to use this sit on this specific desk because if I don't sit on this desk then I won't be able to place my mic right and I need the desk so I need to sit there but the chair is really uncomfortable but okay anyway do you know what I'm saying do you do, do you get the gist here it's kind of like so much anxious energy puts all of these hard it's like hardships on the whole process of creation and it's just like so many, I add so many r- barriers of, of resistance, basically, between me, like between my initial idea and that initial inspirations app and the moment of like actually putting that out into the world. So yeah, so I guess now, since I'm recording a new podcast episode for a new season of The Conscious Club, um... My intention is really just to like let myself do it in exactly the ways that I want to do it. You know, like if I really just want to talk into a mic and see what comes out and just do that that day, that's what I'm going to do. But if on another day I feel really focused that I really want to make an episode on a specific piece, like specific topic, and I want it to be really structured, then I'll do that. But why can't I just let myself just do the thing, create the thing in the way that I want to create it without worrying about other people and without worrying about how other people are doing it, but also without worrying about how other people are receiving it, right? Because so much of my creative work has been this like, it's just held this agenda of gaining validation and love and recognition and appreciation from other people 
And of course, that initial impulse of like, oh, I want to express myself has always been the original thing to motivate me to start my creation process. But because of all that like middle part anxiousness and that that just has felt so draining, it very quickly becomes less about me just wanting to express myself and it has beca- it had become more of me just wanting to impress others because I don't know I guess it was so draining the whole the, like I had learned to make my creative process so draining that the only way it felt good was like if I if I received recognition or appreciation from other people back then that would mean I would get some sort of energy back in return and feel less drained you know what I'm saying but yeah Anyway, not doing that anymore. Thank you for listening to me process through that. Uh, If you don't already know, I'm someone who really enjoys verbally processing all of my inner shit. And I just, that's just how I do it. Like oftentimes, I don't even fully, you know, some people really like journaling. And I've tried journaling and journaling is fun. But what's really efficient for me the most efficient thing for me, the way for me to process my inner world and my thoughts is to just speak. And recording it just makes it a little bit more fun because it makes me feel like I'm speaking to someone or something, you know, and even if even if it's like one person listens, it's, I don't know, it just feels like, okay, well, I had these thoughts and of course these thoughts Having these thoughts and verbally communicating these thoughts out loud has helped me like move some of the energy around in myself and has helped me find clarity about these thoughts. But wouldn't it be amazing if I also recorded these thoughts so then maybe someone somewhere out there would find them, this collection of thoughts that I've perfectly packaged in a voice recording. Wouldn't it be cool if not only I benefited from these this thought processing, but someone else could also collect like a tidbit of like a puzzle piece. If they could they could receive one of a puzzle piece that they need to solve a puzzle within their own life within this podcast. Wouldn't that be cool? And so really that at the core of it, that is my desire why <laughs> I have a desire to have a podcast. Um because I love talking and I've always loved talking and you know what another thing is like you know I was saying that I've always made the process of creation so difficult for myself and with podcasting it's like I felt like I needed to sit at my desk so I could use my nice mic Um, and then I also felt like I had to record it because what a waste to not record a video format of a podcast and anyway I just added so many like extra things that didn't need to be there which which ultimately resulted in me being able to keep up with all these demands and expectations that I put on myself for a little bit but then getting really bored and questioning why the hell I'm doing this anyway and then just like not recording anything for months and that has been a cycle for me so this time what I'm doing is I'm literally, it's 10 p.m., I'm lying in bed, I was actually gonna play The Sims and then go to bed, but then I was like, hey, Reed, do you remember how you told yourself that you want to practice a more easeful process of creation? You know how you've, and also, you know how you're, you've been really excited to record that new Conscious Club podcast episode? Why don't you do it now? Why don't you just use your phone microphone and record the podcast from bed and why don't you just not worry about videoing yourself and take that out of the equation completely just let yourself lie in bed and talk like you've always wanted to right and that's what I'm doing now and it just feels so amazing and I just love it and I don't know I guess again I'm okay I'm saying oh I have no idea why I didn't do this before but like I said I know I didn't do this before. I didn't do this before because I was like, it's not good enough. I need to do it like how other people are doing it. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Well, well, first of all, good enough for who? Right? Good enough for me? Is it when I ask myself, 
is this way of doing this podcast good enough for me? The true honest answer is yes. Actually, I love how I'm doing it. And I love how I'm feeling right now as I do it. And this feels like something that I can truly find enjoyment from um, the more that I do it. It's like when I ask myself that, that's those are the answers. But then when I ask myself, is it good enough for others? That's where like in the past I would have slipped up and been like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. But then if you actually really think about it, there are so many others out there. And the answer is it's going to be good enough for some people and it's not going to be good enough for other people. But the great news is, is that I don't have to satisfy the the value spec no the value value judgments value spe- the spectrum of value <laughs> wait <laughs> what am i trying to say here i don't know what i was going to try to say with that configuration of words but it's like i don't basically the point is, is that i don't have to satisfy that group of people that already don't i don't have to prove anything you know and there's literally nothing to prove if i want to make a podcast i can freaking make a podcast And I'm going to have people that I know will listen to it. Like, I know for sure there is, like, a group of people now that I have that have, like, been with me for long enough that I know that they will tap in occasionally. And, you know, even just for those people, like, that is more than enough. When I actually think about it, I think I've gotten so tricked and tripped up in the whole concept of, like, being seen by as many people as possible because like a version of success that's kind of a version of success that's been fed to me like you're not successful until you are literally in front of like as many people as possible when I actually think about it you know it's pretty freaking crazy if even one person listens to my thoughts and is inspired or moved in some way by them like even one person because that's a whole person and you my thoughts could potentially change the timeline they're on (laughs) because something that I could say that maybe as I'm saying it I don't even realize that like it might not even be the most important notable thing that I've said to myself but to, the other, to this other person, it could be like the exact puzzle piece they need to make a specific decision that can like alter or that does alter the direction they're moving in life to a better direction, you know? And that's enough. <laughs> Why has that... I guess it's just... I mean, I've had this conversation a lot, I think, in my mystery school overflow which, by the way, I'll leave a link in the description or show notes of this episode. But I've had this conversation a lot with people in there. I feel like with the onset of social media fame and the world of influencership, we've become so disconnected with our audience or aka the people who receive our art. Because, like, think about how back in the day, before the internet, if you were an artist and you put your art out there, I guess, like, well, first of all, some some artists, you would have, like, a physical exhibit or show or something where you are physically in your body and showcasing your work in some way. If you're an author, you might be doing, read like, readings you know where you're you know like when you see movies and I guess people still do it doesn't it's not just in movies but where people come and they come to listen to the author of the book read read aloud you know but it's like you have a creative thing that you made and you go out into the world with it and you share it same with like musicians um they're like performing live and I think with the internet it has definitely made creativity and being an artist a lot more accessible for people 
But at the same time, I feel like it's also, for many of us, like, it's made us feel very disconnected. Um, Because for, like, for someone like me who was not, did not identify as a creative person, did not identify as an artist before the internet, and as someone who has only started creating on the internet, I honestly had never done anything I'd never really created anything in the physical world. Like I'd never really made anything handmade or performed for anyone or anything like that in the physical realm. I've only ever shared my creations online. For someone like me, I've never been able to directly interact with my audience. They've always been behind a screen and it's always kind of felt distanced and um, un like more intangible. It's like so much easier as a digital content creator, a digital artist to see your audience as a number, literally as like a follower. You can you 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 think of your audience and you just immediately think about your follower count. You know, and like yes, social media has also the po- one of the positive things about social media is that we've been able to like our art can reach more people than ever before. Like what? Like we can actually, like the there is a possibility for the average person, person's art to reach the senses of millions and millions of people. And that wasn't a possibility unless you were really lucky and you went through middlemen and you had the right connections. That wasn't possible for people decades ago. And now it is. But on the flip side of that is like, at the same time, it's like (laughs) the disconnection from the audience and just being, our minds literally being unable to conceptualize what it means to have 1,500 people in your audience that are watching your posts and like 1,500 people trying to imagine that amount of people in a room like that's insane do you guys know what i'm trying to say here like do you real do you do you see the disconnect um anyway i am just i don't know like it like that's an- another conversation i've been having a lot recently with the people in my life is just this is kind of off topic but not really but (laughs) I guess this is the last thing that I want to share in this episode and then I will sign off and play the sims and then go to sleep but (laughs) but also you know how when we criticize something it's like it's so easy to fall into a pattern of either criticizing something or absolutely loving it it's like the just seeing everything as an or like or instead of seeing it as an and like for example when I was talking about the being an artist on social media or a digital artist it's like I could say I could literally just criticize the disconnect but it felt also important for me just then to also acknowledge the positives of social media because it's always there's always an and social media can cause artists to feel disconnected from the people who receive their work and at the same time social media is also really great for artists because it allows our work to like it allows there to be a possibility for our work to be seen by more people than ever could be in the past you know anyway that's just a little thing I want to give to your mind just to invite actually you know what if I do these weekly it could be fun to do something like that (laughs) where I'm like this week I invite you to really contemplate on where you are still I don't know how to phrase this properly right now but where are you still seeing everything from an or perspective like it's either great or it's the worst thing ever in the world (laughs) Where can you bring in more and energy? Like where can you begin to utilize more of an a lens centered around an andness, as in 
seeing, being able to open yourself up to see both the positives and negatives of one little one specific thing, whatever it is. Today we were talking about social media and the internet as it's in its relation to the process of creation. But it could apply to anything, right? It could apply to life events. It's like, it's every life event. There's It could be seen as like the most, the best and maybe not the most comfortable, but maybe it could be like the best and the most helpful thing that ever happened to us. Or that same event, we could be like, that was the most traumatic and painful and worst thing and most unlucky thing to have happened to us. Like there are times in our lives where we could truly apply both perspectives to that exact same event. But yeah, I'm going to leave you with that. I'm now going to turn this off and I am going to listen back and enjoy my own podcast and receive my own podcast. (laughs) So yeah, thank you for listening and I will speak soon.